Hello, and welcome to Probability and Probability Models. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas, El Paso, and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. Theoretical probability. This is what the math says should happen. I have a couple of different ways of looking at it. First of all, the probability P of E of an event E is the fraction of times we expect E to occur if we repeat the experiment over and over and over again. So it's, it's what the experimental probability gets close to uh, if we were theoretically able to do the experiment an infinite number of times. Now the math definition. The probability P of E of an event E is the limiting value of the estimated probability as the number of trials gets larger and larger. Which is basically what I just said with the, if we were able to do the experiment an infinite number of times. Uh, the estimated probability or experimental probability approaches the theoretical probability as you do more and more trials. But to count it, all we do to find the probability of E is find the number of favorable outcomes and divide by the total number of outcomes in our sample space. That's it. The probability of E is the number in E divided by the number in S. So, compute the theoretical probability given that all outcomes are equally likely. The number in E is 13, the number in S is 20. Our probability of E is 13 divided by 20. Don't overthink it. But don't get in a hurry, because if n of s is 40 and the n of e is 22, don't just assume you're going to put 40 over 22. Remember, probabilities are always between 0 and 1. So the number in e, the event, smaller likelihood of happening. Sample space, that's the total number possible, 40. So 22 out of 40, or 11 out of 20. If you wanted that in a decimal, that would be 0.55. You have 55% chance of event e happening. Find the probability of each event, assuming coins and dice are fair and distinguishable. So two coins are tossed. When two coins are tossed, we know that we have heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, oh my goodness, and tails, tails. All right, that's our sample space. Ugly as it is, that's it. At most one tail, at, uh, these are not fours, these are in fact H's, Just trust me. At most one tail, at most one tail means no more, so zero or one tails. Uh, this has zero tails, one tail, one tail, so there's three of them. Two coins, so we have a total of four outcomes. At most one tail, includes HH, HT, and TH. Therefore, the probability is three-fourths. If a three coins are tossed, all right, the number of outcomes for one coin is two, and then the number of outcomes for a second coin, and then the number of outcomes for a third coin, we know how many. We don't really cons don't care what they are. We need to be able to count how many. At most, one head at most one head means zero heads or one head. So if they're all three tails, that's one. Uh, the first coin is heads, the other two are tails. The second coin is heads, the other two are tails. The third coin is heads, the other two are tails. There's only four different ways that we can get at most one head. So four out of eight or half the time when tossing three coins, the result is at most one head. If two dice are rolled, remember they're fair, distinguishable. And the numbers add up to 5. We had this example earlier when we were talking about sets. There are 36 different ways that we could roll, uh, get results from two dice standard, six-sided dice being rolled. The number of ways they add up to 5 is 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, and 4, 1. That's 4 out of the total of 36 rolls. Simplifies to 1 ninth. If two dice are rolled yet again and the numbers add up to 1, well, the lowest on any single die is 1, and if I add it to another one, I get another 1. 1 plus 1 makes 2. Two dice cannot add up to 1. Right, so that's 0 out of 36. Here's an impossible event. Two dice are rolled. The numbers add to 1 on standard six-sided die. Not going to happen. If two dice are rolled, both numbers are prime. 
Denominator is definitely 36, but both numbers are prime. Let's see. A prime is defined as a number, uh, as an integer n greater than 1, such that only n and 1 divide the number. Whoo, that was rough. Basically what I'm saying is uh, 2 and then some odd numbers that you know, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and so on. Those are our odd numbers, but we're looking at dice. 2, 3, and 5 are the only odd numbers. 1, not odd, excuse me, prime numbers. 1 is not a prime number. 1 is not a prime number. So the only primes on a die are 2, 3, and 5. We can find all the different combinations. Uh, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 5. 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 5. 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 5. There's nine different ones. 9 out of 36 to make 1 fourth. That took way more explanation than it probably should have. That's my bad. The union rule of probability seems to have disappeared from my slide. That's very disturbing. So let me write it down for you. If A and B are any two events, then the probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of their intersection. Notice how this is very similar to the union rule of counting and since probabilities are based on counting, we're going to have the union rule of probability is the same as the union rule of counting, only a P instead of an N in front of it. Some more principles of probability distributions. This is part two. Part one was in the relative frequencies section. The probability of the sample space has to be one. Something has to happen. The probability of the empty set is zero because the probability of nothing happening, it's impossible. Something has to happen. If we have a set A and its complement, the probability that A does not happen plus the probability that A does happen is 1. Because the sample space has to consist of everything in an event and everything not in that event. All right, going back, to, uh, I used an example. If you're trying to avoid park place, luxury, tax, and boardwalk on the game of Monopoly, uh, A might be you avoided them. A compliment, you landed on them. You will either land on them or you won't. 100% chance that one of those two things happens. Uh, here's an example using our union rule of counting. If the probability of uh, find the probability of A union B, if probability of A is 0.1, probability of B is 0.6, and probability of the intersection is 0.05, we know the probability of the union is 0.1 plus 0.6 minus 0.05. I think of it as money. 10 cents and 60 cents makes 70 cents. If I subtract off a nickel, I'm down to 65 cents. Of course, this works mainly for U.S. money because I don't know really any of the other currency exchanges and so forth. But probability is 0.65. There we go. That's it. Theoretical probability. Thanks for listening.